and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we are not making soap. We are going to make whipped body butter. This is so luxurious. Um, I am just really into winter skin self-care. Give yourself a treat. I just think this recipe is divine. I will share the full recipe in the description box below. Um, this is a triple butter whipped body butter. We're going to use mango shea and cocoa butters in here along with some luxury oils. It's a very simple recipe. It's a non-greasy feel. Uh, and I'll show you a trick to making a non-greasy body butter. It absorbs quickly into your skin. And if you watch the sugar scrub recipe, if you get out of a nice hot shower and you've polished up your skin, if you top it off with a body butter, oh my word, you're gonna feel so indulged. <laughs> it's such a treat. So the fragrance, I'm actually gonna do the same fragrance in my body butter that I did in my sugar scrub. So they'll kind of go hand in hand as like a body treat. So I'm going to use bergamot mandarin. Do you say bergamot? or bergamot. I don't know. Let's say I looked this up once. I had this discussion in an earlier video. Bergamot. Bergamot. <laughs> anyway, this is the fragrance from Wholesale Supplies Plus. It smells really good. It's a little juicy, a little tart, a little sweet. I'm loving it. It was wonderful in the sugar scrub. It's going to be wonderful in this whipped body butter. Um, yeah. It's winter time. You know, winter skin gets dry and thirsty, and so let's nourish our skin. I think this is a great DIY project. Young people can do this because you're not working with lye or caustic materials, so um, it's a very simple recipe again. I will share it all, and we'll talk through it as we go. So uh, the first thing I need to do is get my hair pulled back and get my surface area sanitized, all my work equipment sanitized, and the jars that this is going into. Everything needs to be really clean, really clean. <laughs> so let's get all the prep work done and then we will come back and make some very luxurious whipped body butter. All right, so I've got everything ready to go with the first step of this body butter. All of my equipment has been sanitized and wiped down and uh, there's a little ring around my bowl. That is a stain. This is a very clean bowl, <laughs> so don't let that stain distract you. Um, and I like this bowl for this project because it has a footer on it. It's very stable, so when it comes time to whip the butter, it's, it's a nice stable bowl to work with. So I have my scale teared out, and the first thing I wanna do is measure all of my oils and butters in here, get them melted down together and really blended, and then put it in the fridge and let it cool for about an hour or so before we can come in and start whipping and doing the finishing off on this. So the first thing we wanna do is let's measure out our butters, and this is gonna be a triple butter combination. So we need 11 ounces of shea butter to begin. We've got 11 ounces of shea butter, and now I need seven ounces of mango butter. All right, we've got our seven ounces of mango butter in here, and now we need four ounces of cocoa butter. And I get my cocoa butter in these wafers because they're very easy to measure. Um, but you can get a big block of cocoa butter too. It really doesn't matter, whatever your preference is. So just going up to four ounces. There we go. And now one of the last hard oil in here is coconut oil. And today I'm using this organic coconut oil I got from Costco. It was a really good price and it's a really nice cold pressed coconut oil. I need 11 ounces of coconut oil in here. All right, there are all the hard oils and butters. Isn't that luxurious looking? Love it. Okay, so got that teared out. Now I'm gonna add my liquid oils and I need 11 ounces of liquid oil. And this is where you can get creative too. Um, 
Today I'm using jojoba oil and grapeseed oil because I really like the feel of that. They're a lightweight oil because the butters in here are so heavy and dense and, I, and this is a non-greasy recipe. So I feel like these really help aid in uh, lightening up and they have great skin benefits. Jojoba oil and grapeseed oil are very good for your skin. So those are the oils I'm choosing. You could do anything from a nice olive oil to walnut oil, sunflower oil, whatever liquid oil you like. Um, these are the ones I'm choosing. 11 ounces is what I need. So I'm just gonna split it up between these two. Okay, and the last uh, liquid ingredient is my vitamin E oil. And I don't really have a measurement for this. I have it on my scale. I just give it like a little squeeze, um, just because this is so great for you. So a little squeeze like that. So if you don't have a bottle, I got this at, uh, you can get this at any drugstore. Um, you can get it online, Amazon. If you don't have it in a bottle, you can even get vitamin E oil gel caps and poke a hole in your gel cap and squeeze it in there if you happen to have those, if you take it as a supplement. But vitamin E oil is in there. And now what I need to do is get this all melted. I'm going to just do it in bursts in the microwave. I don't want to overheat it because of the shea butter in there. So about 30 second bursts until it's all melted and I get it incorporated really well together. All right, it's almost all the way melted. There's a few little chunks in here that I'm just going to hand stir until they're all melted. And then I'm gonna go pop this in the fridge, like I said, and let it kind of semi, semi firm up. It's, you know, you don't want it rock solid again. Well, it won't get rock solid because there's liquid oils in there, but you want it pretty firm. You definitely want it cooled down. Otherwise you're just gonna waste your energy whipping. It will just take literally forever. And uh, so you just want all the oils very blended. And there it is, it's all melted, so. We'll come back when it's ready to uh, add the finishing ingredients and start whipping. All right. <laughs> Funny story. Um, one hour in the fridge was not even near enough. So I popped it up in the freezer, checked it after a couple hours. It still wasn't enough. And, um, and then I got busy. And so this is very, very solid. And that's actually okay. Um, so I kind of overdid it. It doesn't need to be all solidified like this that's all right we're not going to be daunted by that we're going to go ahead and try and whip it um, and if it needs to warm up a little at room temperature that's fine but uh it took way more than one hour in the refrigerator to even get close because it was so warm from melting so fyi let's just even see if this will even start to whip and i just have my little handy dandy KitchenAid hand mixer. I do not have a KitchenAid in my soap studio yet. It's on my wish list. Um, someday I hope to get one, but right now I do hand mixers. So you know what? That's how we roll. So it is gonna work. I just have to knock the sides down here. A Little bit of muscle, get the sides in. And uh, it's actually good if it's harder like this because then you don't have to stop and pause and put it back in the fridge, which sometimes if you start whipping and it's too early, the friction of the spinning will heat it up again and that's totally fine. You just throw it back in the fridge, but um, now, now it's so cold, I'm not gonna have to worry about that at all. Isn't that nice? We're gonna go with the positive here. So we're just gonna start getting this loose and see what we can do here. After I get everything whipping, and I know that I have all the stuff off the sides, then we will add our next ingredients. All right, we've got a nice whip and I've got all the solid oils kind of blended here. And so now I'm going to add the next ingredients, which is the fragrance. I have 1.3 ounces of fragrance for this volume 
with the fragrance I'm using. So the usage rate for the bergamot uh, mandarin was the rate for lotion and body butters. So what you need to do is when you have a fragrance, the provider that you bought it from will have a, a usage rate for, this would be in, in the lotion and body products category. And you just look up that percentage and you can figure it out for your volume. So you can use any fragrance, any essential oil that you want. You could even leave this unscented. To be quite honest with those wonderful unrefined cocoa butter, it, it has a really nice uh, fragrance all by itself. So you can totally skip this. But anyway, here's the fragrance. I did put in a little bit of OptiFan preservative. This does not require a preservative because it has no liquid portion in it, but it's a bath product. You're gonna use it in your bathroom and people will be dipping their fingers in there. You may have wet hands when you use it because I know I like to lotion up when my hands are still a little bit damp. And so because there could be water introduced to this product, I wanted to use some uh, preservatives. So again, if you're using Optifen, Germaben, whatever, preservative you're using, look up the usage rate for the volume you're using, but I would recommend it. You don't need it technically, but I recommend it for the type of product this is. So we're just gonna set that on top because we have something else coming in here. Next is, this is, it's about a half a cup of arrowroot powder. Um, I don't like to weigh this because a half a cup is four ounces, but that's a liquid weight. Arrowroot is very fluffy. So this is about eight tablespoons or a half a cup of unpacked, loosely packed arrowroot. So um, it's not gonna weigh four ounces even though the volume is there. And this is what makes it not greasy. Arrowroot is very wonderful. It gives it a really silky feel. It's a very fine powder. It's gonna give it a really nice skin feel and it's gonna cut down the greasiness on it and it will just absorb right in. Um, it's just, it's a fabulous product and you can get it on Amazon or lots of distributors carry arrowroot powder. And it's a wonderful, you know, it's, it's vegan friendly. If you're um, making a vegan product, it's, you're good to go. So that's in there and that's it. So now it's just about whipping, getting this whipped up and getting it piped into the jars. So what I'm gonna do, <laughs> I'm not gonna turn my blenders on right now, otherwise all that arrowroot would just puff up in my face and that's a hot mess. So I'm just gonna kind of poke it around till I feel like it's sort of wetted with the fragrance. That's why the fragrance is nice on top because it wets the arrowroot. And now once I feel like there's no splashy pools of fragrance and there's no puffy clouds of arrowroot, we're gonna start to blend again. we go look at those beautiful peaks now what you you can keep whipping this and incorporating more air and it will get fluffier and fluffier I like to keep it a little bit on the denser side because as you ship this it's gonna settle anyway and I want people to get more product you can fluff it up more but that's just more air and I want you to get more body butter <laughs> that's what I'm thinking so here it is look at those gorgeous peaks this is so luscious. Here is my piping bag. I just have a little swirly tip. The bits in there are, I've been holding the spatula in here. So that's just body butter in there. Everything's all clean. I've got my jars here off to the side and my little ceiling lids to go on them. So let's get this in the piping bag and get it down in those jars.
All right, so here they are. I got 12, I got a dozen, four and a half ounce volume of the whipped butter in here. These are six ounce jars, but because it's whipped up with air, you need to make room for it. But aren't those just adorable? I sure wish you could smell these. So I got 12 four and a half ounce jars of wonderful body butter here. And uh, so now I'm gonna tap these all down, kind of lose some of the fluff in there because I wanna get the lids on and get these sealed up. And then I will sanitize the outside of the bar. Sorry, not bars, the outside of the jars so that the labels will adhere. All right, and I've got a clean paper towel. I'm just gonna run around the threads here so that when I close the lid down, it's all gonna be good. The piping bag really helps to keep the outside of the jars clean. Uh, the sugar scrum video that I did, if you watched that, it's a very messy procedure. And I actually may <laughs> visit trying a piping bag just because it makes cleaning up so much easier if you can pipe it down in there and not get any sloopies on the outside. It really helps when it comes time to label to not have adherence issues and all of that but these are such a wonderful, oh my goodness, I just wish y'all could be here with me. <laughs> All right, so my jars come with a little sealing lids. Most uh, jars that you buy can come with a little uh, foam sealing lid. I put it, whoops, I put it in the lid, and when you screw this down tight, it will actually make a seal on the container. So I'm gonna seal this down nice and tight. And there it is. I will use rubbing alcohol to really clean out the outside here so that the labels will stick. I have shrink bands that will go down on the, the threads here so that when you get the product, it is absolutely, you know, it's yours. It hasn't been touched. Very sanitary, but so wonderful. everything's sealed up so the gloves can come off and I'm very anxious to get in here and just use what's in the bowl nothing's gonna go to waste so let me just give you a sample here oh my word it absorbs so quickly it's just coming into winter let me tell you and look it soaks in it's not leaving that totally greasy shine on your skin it soaks in so beautifully. This is wonderful on my cuticles too. I, uh, I get my nails done at the salon, but my cuticles get ravaged and I love this as a cuticle cream. It's great on anywhere you have dry skin. So nice and no shine. See, it absorbs right in. It's non-greasy. It doesn't feel greasy. And uh, you rub this in, let it sit for a minute and it's gonna soak right into your thirsty skin. Hope you give this recipe a try. I'm gonna get these labeled up. And uh, if you give it a try and you love this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe so you don't miss anything going on in the soap shop. And I'd love to hear how you like the recipe if you try it out. All right, it's time to label these luscious little butter, body butters. I'm so delighted with how this came out. The consistency, it's fluffy, it's luxurious. So uh, they're all sealed up ready to go. I've cleaned the outside of the containers just to make sure they're nice and squeaky clean and dry. And then here are my labels that I made um, on Maestro Label Designer on OnlineLabels.com. I'm not affiliated with them, but I like their products and that's where I buy my labels and do some of the designing. I also use Avery.com um, for some label designing. Uh, so anyway, I'm not brand specific on the labels and the designer, but that is where I do most of my label design is on Maestro, and there we go. It's got all the information, the ingredients. Aren't those wonderful? So now I'm going to get all the labels on these, and I, then I will shrink band the seal on here, and uh, there it is. Hope you enjoyed the video.